To illustrate the back EMF, I have a neomagnet 3 inch. I made a pancake coil, a little over 2 ohms. It has number 21 wire. It has no metal core, so there is no reaction to the magnetic field. I'm going to short out the coil. That would be the same as a maximum load on a generator. And if I try to drop it, the back EMF is an opposite reaction to that field. So you can see in a generator that this causes the low efficiency of a motor generator. To illustrate back EMF on a commercial generator, I have some permanent magnet generator motors. You can see that the generator freely spins We will now effectively short out the coil, the field coils, giving it the maximum amount of load, but also giving the maximum amount of back EMF. See the difference? Just imagine what you could do if you had a generator operating without back EMF. I have the coil shorted again. You can see that through the drag, I have a metal frame under the table. Though I've worked with these Neos for a long time, I still have a very healthy respect. They have a thousand pound pull off of a piece of metal. If you decide to work with anything here, that would be at your own risk, of course. Be very extremely careful. So I have it where you can see it drags. It's in the uh, you can see where it's dragging coming into the magnetic field. And it's dragging when it's coming off the magnetic field. And if you're very careful to watch, you'll see something here. You might have already noticed. There's a little bit of a free jump. Right in the center where the back EMF is not having any effect. No drag. Right in there. So the question is, is there any voltage, current, power coming out of that zone area? This is how a commercial generator works. You have a permanent magnet for the kind that I was showing you. And the coil passes through the magnetic field. But this magnetic edge here, the coil is entering into and it's also entering out of very strong drag <laughs> and but right in that little zone there's no drag at all this is very curious to me so the next step I did was to see if any power is being developed in this area I have a 1 ohm resistor acting as a load. That would be a heavy load on any generator. I have it hooked up to my oscilloscope. 0.2 volts per division. Now on the side, you can see that drag. Yet in the middle, we still have a voltage. 
I don't experience any drag, but if you get out into the center, you do. I also found, we'll see this later, there seemed to be some type of, same type of uh, action going on at the center of this coil. But we'll see that when I start up the generator. So that, that solved for me whether there was power being output. I'd say that's by a volt or so. I have one ohm. So uh, about one ohm, one watt. Not converting it into DC, but peak to peak, one watt. Before going into testing and measurements, I'll go through the construction. This is my drive motor. I have about a quarter inch cam on there. It'll shift it back and forth, a little over a quarter inch. Dial rod going over to my coil. The coil is about two and three quarter inch, smaller than the three inch Neo, because I wanted to have it vibrate within that range. Earlier I said I did find another spot here. It seemed like it worked very very well. It gave me a little bit more voltage out. So that's why I have it offset a little bit. These are two three inch Neos each having a thousand pound pull off. You're having a ton of magnetic force in there. Yet there's no drag at all. I put it on a little bit of a spring. It seemed to help but not really necessary. Just something like a pendulum effect. This here is uh, my spacer in between here. If you decide to do anything again, uh, it's your responsibility. These are very tricky to get in there. This is uh, holding this apart. Strap down. Okay. We'll go ahead and go into the measurements here. So, I decided the best way would be to take measurements of my motor, what it pulled by itself, without any load. So I've disconnected the coil from the generator. We'll go ahead and test. I have nine volts going in from an adapter. This is my amperage. Uh, that's reading about 31, 32, 31, 32. 32. Don't want to short that out. So if I have nine volts, motor is drawing 0.32 amp. Multiply that together gives you power or watts. So we have, uh, I'm sorry, that was 32.32. Yeah. So that gives you 2.88 watt. That's without a load being added. So now, earlier I said, wouldn't that be something to have a generator that did not have any back EMF? So I have my one ohm load. I'm hooking up the coil. Normally a 
standard generator, if you say just running maybe 3 watts and you decide to load it down so you can take out a watt here, naturally this has to make up for that. So instead of being 3 watts free running, now it's going to have to produce 4 watts. If you want to take out 2 watts here, then no longer is it 3 watts, but you're going to have to add 2 to make up for that, so that'd be 5 watts. So you can kind of get the drift there. So let's see if we can use this zone there to bring out power from the coil without drawing any more from the motor. There we go. 32. Uh, we're getting about five, five and a half spaces. I have it on the point two divisions there. It's getting close to the six. So let's see what happened there. If we had, it wasn't quite six divisions, but that makes it nice and even. Six divisions times point two. That's one point two volts. We have the one ohm load. Multiply those together gives you the wattage or power. So that would be, or amperage, I'm sorry. So that would be 1.2 amps. And we multiply voltage times amperage. And that gives us the power or wattage. And that's 1.44 watts. Peak to peak. I'm not, there are formulas you can bring this into with frequency and all to where you could have a DC component. But uh, here is just about half more and we did not bring out any more power. So this is very strange. I've never seen anything like that or talked about. And it seems to be there's two places I found. One, the coil dead center and the other that it's out just a little bit. You'll have to kind of play and shift that back and forth to get a maximum. But even stranger, if I bring that feather even more into the leading edge of the magnetic field, uh, the ratio uh, becomes greater so that even though you're drawing a little bit more, you're really up in the power coming out. But I wanted to illustrate that no, uh, the no back EMF effect here. Yeah. So this is uh, something that you just can have a lot of fun with. I want to illustrate, I'm using the same motor as I used on the uh, no back EMF generator. I'm driving a another generator. So we'll go through the same steps. We'll see what it draws current wise. The, the motor itself without any load. About 30, point thirty-eight, thirty-seven, point thirty-eight. Okay. Point thirty-eight. I'll go ahead and hook up my one ohm load like I did on the other generator. One ohm load. Okay. On the other generator we did not see an increase. So 0 0.38 is what we had here. Amps. Look at that. Over an amp. That's three times more. So you can see what's going on here from a standard generator that has the back EMF present as into the design I happened to discover. I, uh, nobody special, I just happened to be working with magnets and 
pancake coils and I happen to notice that little free jump that it had and it went from there. There are other designs. Some of you out there have uh, ideas already I'm sure. So happy inventing and, uh, and uh, may the blessings be.